Hey, it's Jeff. Welcome back to another video. Today, I want to remove sphagnum moss from two of my more expensive and rare plants. First one is the Aglaenema Pictum Tricolor, and the second one is the Syngonium Frosted Heart. They've been in moss since I brought these home, and for the most part, they've been doing well, but I want to put them in a little bit of a larger pot and then transition them to soil. So let's get started. So I got two smaller terracotta pots, which I'll be using uh, for these plants. They're obviously larger than the uh, current containers. So let's open these up. I buy these from the dollar store. Two pots for a buck fifty. Good deal. Okay, so I'll set those aside for now. I filled up this container with kind of lukewarm water. I'm gonna start off with the Syngonium Frosted Heart. Just going to squeeze the edges. You can use a little knife to pry it out as well. I like to soak the moss in water. Once it starts to absorb all the water, you can just kind of lightly agitate it. And usually the moss will just start to fall away. But a lot of times, once you get uh, closer to the stem of the plant, you'll have to pull away a bunch of moss. So you can also use a pencil just to kind of break up the moss as well. Being very careful of uh, not damaging the roots. This one's being kind of stubborn. It's pretty packed in there. So I might have to let this soak for a little bit and just slowly break it apart. Just take your time, it's no rush. Don't wanna damage any of the roots and send this plant into, uh, into shock if you don't have to. Uh, when dealing with sphagnum moss, you can see uh, plant roots are usually white. And when um, you have a strand of sphagnum moss, you can see that this is uh, kind of like black or dark brown. So I know this isn't a root. So I like to tug or pull those off. Unfortunately, when removing sphagnum moss, it's inevitable that you're gonna be damaging some of these smaller, more fine roots. Sometimes it comes apart really easy and other times it's a little bit more of a struggle. That's why I don't like sphagnum moss. It's really hard if you want to remove it and put it into soil. Starting to come off pretty good now. Once you start to uh, loosen up this sphagnum moss, then, whoops, oh, that wasn't a root. Okay, I thought I just took a huge root off. I like to remove as much of this moss as possible because if you pot it in soil right now, like it is, the soil is obviously a lot more dense, whereas the sphagnum moss, it tends to hold on to a lot of moisture. And if you put it in that dense soil or dense uh, potting medium, uh, it has the tendency to kind of suffocate the roots um, because the moss stays wet for too long. It doesn't have the ability to dry out like it did in uh, this container. So that's what uh, can potentially lead to root rot. Okay, so I'm gonna finish this up. I'm not gonna bore you with uh, watching me take all, every piece of moss off, but um, afterwards when you have this uh, pile of moss, you can reuse it, but just give it a good squeeze and drain out the water. And then you can set that aside and reuse it for another time. There, I got off as much moss as I safely could get off without damaging any of the roots. Um, it's still got like a little, just like little bits, but I'm not too worried about that. It's just the kind of larger clumps that um, can lead to root rot. This is a cutting. It looks like um, just a small little portion of the previous stem and it's branched out on this side. So this is an example of a, uh, I guess a stem cutting which eventually it uh, sprouts into a whole new plant. I'm using Promix's uh, tropical plant soil as well as their uh, orchid bark mix. I'm just going to mix that together so it uh, provides a nice kind of airy, well-draining soil. And then I'm going to just pot this guy up. So sizing it up might uh, add a little bit to the bottom. Just something like that. Place the cutting in, make sure all the roots are submerged. And then I'm simply going to just fill it in with soil. And that is it. The hard part was getting all the moss off. The potting it up is the easy part. Put some on the back, just kind of lightly push it down. Since this is coming from moss, which uh, tends to stay a little bit more on the moist side, 
I'm gonna give it some water here. Um, normally, whenever I transition or repot a plant, I typically don't water it right away. I might uh, wait a couple days. It just gives the roots time to uh, heal up and adjust to the new soil. So I'm gonna set that aside and we'll start with the Pictum tricolor next. Just gonna do the exact same thing with this guy. Give it a little bit of a squeeze. Oh, this makes me so nervous. This is my wish list plant. I don't want it to get damaged. Okay, so this one's coming apart much easier. All the moss is literally just falling off, which that makes me happy. Okay, so these roots look super awesome. They are definitely thicker roots compared to the uh, frosted heart there. And it's not as compact, so this might be a much easier process than the, uh, the first one. Okay, so this makes me feel much better. This won't take long at all. Put it in some soil and then it'll be done. Just gonna remove the moss from the container. This is how you should uh, prepare sphagnum moss if you do use it. Soak it in water for a little bit and then squeeze it out. You don't want it like dripping or soaking with water. You just want it slightly damp. Just like that. Now these roots, they look super good. There's no like super fine roots that uh, branch off from the main ones. So that's why it was really easy to remove most of the moss. Okay, nothing's rotted at all. Looks really good. Got most of the moss off. This was an easy one. I should have started with this one first. Okay, let's pot this up in some soil. I'll be using the same mixture for this plant. This is basically what I use for most of my indoor tropical house plants is the uh, tropical soil and orchid bark. So I'm just gonna hold it slightly off the bottom and then I'm going to just dump in as much soil as I can. You can use your hand or you can use the pencil to poke down lightly around those roots, making sure that it fills in around, fills all those air gaps. I'm going to water this one as well here in a second. So my little watering can. Just gonna let that soak in. I'll do the pictum here as well. This helps uh, settle the soil around the roots. If you need to, you can add some more soil if it does settle, but uh, otherwise, I'm just gonna give it a little bit more water and that should be good. Like I said, I don't want those uh, previous sphagnum moss roots uh, drying out uh, too quick. So um, yeah, I'll provide some updates down the road, but I think that's gonna be pretty much it for this video. If you have any comments or questions, please leave it down below in the comment section. Thanks again for watching all my videos, everyone. Take care.